Hey, my name is Ashley Gleckman with the Global Composers Network, and today I want to talk to you about five tips I wish I knew when I started out. So composing music is pretty enigmatic. You start out and there's a piece of paper, there's notes that need to go on that paper, but how are the notes gonna get there in the first place? What instruments are gonna be playing the notes? Um, how are the notes going to be sort of built horizontally? The arrangement, how's that going to be? And these are all perfectly valid questions. And when you're, especially when you're starting out, these questions sort of hit you like a big brick wall. But there are quite a few things that when I started out, I wish I knew. Um, and I think it would have helped me quite a bit. So I just wanna go through those five things right now. So hopefully that'll help you guys. First one is start out with the small ideas. So a house can't be built without the foundation. A flower can't be grown without a seed. It's always the small ideas that then blossom into these huge ideas. And so a lot of times when we're writing music, we think, oh, there's gonna be a huge brass section and then a huge percussion section. It's all gonna to grow to this grand crescendo. And that's totally cool. Um, I do that all the time as well. But it's also very important to say, okay, what is the smallest idea that this whole entire piece can be broken down to? Right, the Jaws score is so much more than those two notes, you know. But it can all be broken down to those to those two notes, or you know, one of the most famous of all time is the. You know, that's a pretty simple motif, or uh, Mozart's fortieth. Or you have, you know, the Gladiator. These are all ideas that can be written out. Um, on a piece of paper and you know with a, a couple harmonic ideas that can then be changed in different instrumentation and be placed within different scenes of the movie um, and depending on the accompaniment can be used in a variety of ways so themes and motifs and all these type of things are the small ideas that can then, then be developed into these huge ideas the next one is a super important one save 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 back up back up and back up so when you're writing music and you're working on a film or something like that um, and you're working on a cue, sometimes you're so under the deadlines that you totally forget to save your project and maybe you don't have autosave on at the beginning um, and the project will crash somehow and you'll lose all of your work and that could be absolutely horrific. So make sure that when you open up a project after 10 minutes or 15 minutes, wherever you feel like there's a landmark, just do save and turn on auto save, keep saving, make sure that everything is there. And then when you're done with the project, whether it's a whole film score where you have over an hour of music or you know big chunks of, of content, um, shove it on a hard drive, put it in the storage room, make sure that you have different copies of all this stuff because um, you know I had a flood in the basement around three months ago where I lost a hard drive full of tons of old project files and I wish I would have had more of that and it wasn't on the computer, so those are gone forever. So save, 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 back up, back up, and back up. Next one is it's super helpful to be bilingual or multilingual in terms of DAWs. So I started out in Logic Pro X and I had a great time with it. I think it's an amazing, amazing platform. And then I moved to Cubase because I really liked the, the feel and the look and the, the MIDI editing capabilities, etc. And I think they're both great DAWs and I think there's you know plenty of great DAWs in the market and depending on you, um, yeah, it's, it's all really a stylistic um, choice in terms of what you want to use. But I think that it's super helpful to know different ones so that if there's a job opportunity, maybe a composer assistantship, or you're working on a film with somebody and they use a specific DAW so that you can hand over project files um, instead of you know using MIDI files. And that's totally something that happens all the time. I think it was Josh and Jacob who worked on Planet Earth and they were exchanging MIDI files because one uses Cubase and one uses Logic. So that's always cool, but when you're working on a project and the composer or um, the other person that you're working with, or um, it's always really, really helpful to, to know that specific DAW. So maybe learn the top three Cubase, Logic, Pro Tools, um, and that should really get you on your way. So the next one is listen to as much music as possible. And I've heard a lot of people in the composer community say, don't listen to film music if you're a film composer. And I definitely respectfully disagree. Um, throughout my years of composing, I, I love to listen to other types of music, but I also love to listen to film music because there's so much film music that isn't only great film music, but also great music. Um, and it's just great to listen to uh, without the film and everything like that. And you learn so much. Um, just from listening to it about arrangement and orchestration and the language of music and I think that it's definitely something you should do is listen to tons of different film scores 
away from the film, but also with film, so that you know how they function in different ways. So that's super important, but also, whether it's rock or rap or country or anything, there's something that you can learn from each of them. Um, it might be something that you don't like, something that you do like, but they're all something that you can put into your pool of influence and take with you and learn from. So listen to as much music as possible, whether it's rock, rap, dubstep, you'll learn something from all of it, and um, it's definitely super, super helpful in your development as a composer or as a musician. So the next one is learn your instrument. So if you're a composer in the modern day, more than likely you're gonna be using a computer to write music. But also this applies to pencil and paper. The whole concept is just learn whatever it is that you are writing music on. So with a computer, that means learning samples. So learning what goes together with what, what doesn't go together with what, learning how expression, vibrato, modulation, how all those sort of work with samples to create a more realistic um, sounds. Uh, this also to, uh, you know, goes into plugins, automation, um, everything like that. So all the things that you will sort of need to actually visualize your music and um, actually create it within the computer. Definitely spend quite a bit of time on that because when I was starting out, I spent most of my time on composition. And if I could go back, I would say like maybe 60% composition, 40% learning the computer because it is so helpful when you begin to understand a lot of the composition aspects, being able to know how to apply them and how to create them and produce them within uh, the computer. So there are the top five things I wish I knew when I was starting out. So if you guys want to become involved with the GCN, definitely join our Facebook group, check out our website, uh, globalcomposersnetwork.net, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye.